Congratulations on the new album, Vengeance Falls. I mean, you guys are touring it now. You're going to a lot of places. And uh, um, the, f the first thing I wanted to ask you guys, you're getting some mixed reviews, but most of them are obviously positive. But the first question is, um, some people have said that you guys are going to lose some diet fans, but you're going to make a whole new, like, broader fan base because of this album. What do you guys make of statements like these? We've been releasing records since 2002. We've been hearing that since 2002, and we're still around, and a lot of bands that were peers of ours aren't around for that period of time. So the proof is, to quote the Brits, the proof is in the pudding. Yeah. Um, we do what we love. Actually, to quote Andrew WK, we do what we like, and we like what we do. So it's nice that we can constantly make exactly what we want to make. And we don't think, when we first start off, we would think, oh, are people going to dislike this? Are people going to like this? Is this technical enough for extreme metal fans? Nowadays, we just make what we want to hear. And I think when you can finally silence the people of praise and the people of contempt towards your band, then you truly make your own honest music. And that's the best way to do it. So people are always free to love it or hate it. Whatever they do, that's fine by us as long as we are making honest music from ourselves. Take us into studio, working with, uh, with Draymond, with David Draymond from Disturbed. How did the relationship start with you guys? And uh, why did you guys decide to work with him? Uh, well, the, the relationship started back in 2005 when we first met him. We were opening for Danzig in oh, Chicago, wow. and he saw us play. Uh, I can't remember exactly because I... That was back when we partied hard, so things are blurry. But I remember meeting him, and we gave him a hoodie. Met him upstairs. Yeah, we met him upstairs. Uh, it was at the House of Blues. And he loved our band. We gave him the hoodie. We were just blown away that, you know, man, the singer of Disturbs here, and he really dug what we were doing. So we kept in touch all these years, and we finally we toured with them in Australia. And then Mayhem in 2011, we were just about to release in Waves. We gave him an early copy of the CD, and... He came up a few days later, and, and normally when you give an album to someone, you expect, you know, maybe they won't listen to this or whatever. He came up a few days later, was genuinely blown away with the progress our band had made uh, in writing and production and everything. And he just said it would be really killer to work in some way, whether it's an album, a song, or just down the, down the line. And we kept in touch, and about a year later, when it came time to actually pick who was going to be working with us, you know, we, we met up with... David again and showed him a few demos, talked about what we'd like to see out of the album, and he was really excited to work with us, and that was one thing that we all said, that if we're going to work with someone, we, we want to work with someone that's excited to be part of the project and has a vision for what he would like to see come from us, and we also were excited to work with him. It's something different, and that's what we've been about since day one, always having a different uh, scenario for making the record and not just resting and doing the easy thing and just staying in Orlando every time. And I think that's why this album is unique from, from the other ones. In Waves, you guys tuned down to Drop D Flat. Uh, did you guys do the same on, uh, on the new record? Mm -hmm. And when you guys are playing, I mean, do you guys go full Drop D Flat or, or do you have like, different guitars? How does that work live? Every record has been tuned down half a step. Is it? So there's E flat standard, drop, uh, sorry, B flat seven string standard and drop D flat uh, Drop D flat. So that, that doesn't complicate things when you guys are playing live? No, no. No one can tell even that we're half step. They'll probably, for people that miss the fact that we did that, they'll only know now that I said it. Coming back to touring, um, being together, I mean, you guys have been more or less together for like almost 10 years now um, with In and Out members, but for being in a band for 10 years now, um, does the road get harder now than it was, for instance, nine or eight years ago, or does it get. Um, well, Better now than touring in a van. So uh, I mean, look at this room we're in right now. Yeah, we used to do interviews drinking, in like drinking, toilets, and now drinking we're brandy. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's in the penthouse. No, nope. yeah, this is this is the tough lifestyle. Actually, <laughs> actually we said that last night while we were all eating uh, birai, yeah. and we were sitting around eating birai and drinking South African pinotage. We're like, man, life sure is hard on the road. <laughs> well, it's, we've been touring for ten years, and we get to go, you know, South Africa for the first time after ten years, and. It's been awesome, you know. Uh, ever, you know, we landed yesterday morning, and we just we're just doing as much th many things as possible. Going to Table Mountain, going out to eat, going sightseeing, and it's been great. You know, it's always fun. You know, we've gotten to go all over the world and been places where most people could only dream of going in their lifetime. Even to one of the places we've gone, we've been to, you know, Australia like seven times. You know, how many people, you know, normally go to Australia seven times in ten years? So. Um, it's, it's pretty awesome. We get to travel to all these amazing places and it gives you a great perspective of the world and, you know, inspiration and a different 
viewpoints to write, you know, music about. And, you know, you're not, we're not just closeted, you know, just sitting in our rooms all the time. You know, we get to go out and experience the world, which is a pretty amazing thing to, you know, we've been to almost, you know, we've been to every continent now except for Antarctica. <laughs> so hopefully uh, someday we can pull the Metallica thing and cap it off. <laughs> After South Africa, you're going to go to Mexico and then you're going to do like a whole month in, in the States, like dates off to each other and then you guys are going to go to europe and do you guys get nervous when you see all these dates stacking up towards the end of the year i mean th of course you know to address this question the question before there are always difficult moments mm -hmm. in anything you do you, no matter how awesome your job is of, of course it's, it's difficult to be away from family it's difficult to um when you're touring places like the states club level from 800 to 1200 people typically you might not have a toilet or a shower or a dressing room little things like that that people may take for granted the fact that you have a toilet where you need to have it like that kind of thing um but no it's just what we're used to i mean i've been in this band longer than i've not been in this band in my life so it's all i know to, how to do and we fill it up with amazing things like these guys are mentioning sightseeing and eating and living as the locals do. We just finished UK into Europe and Australia into South Africa and then Mexico and then North America, then Europe, then North America, again. and then I believe Europe again. Everywhere. Yeah, and then possibly Australia and Asia. So that's, that's, that's what it is. And you fill it up with cool things. Thankfully, we're with a band and crew that all shares common interests, things like good food and good drink from local places. We meet so many bands, and these are bands that, yeah, maybe we'll get along with them conversationally, but I can't see myself ever becoming best friends with a band that doesn't like to be somewhere, that would come to South Africa and be like, I need to find myself a Chili's or a McDonald's ASAP. We're probably not going to get along. Um, yeah, so you, you, you thankfully have common interests, like some of us train martial arts, some, some of us work out together, some of us do yoga, some of us are drinking buddies, that kind of thing. So you've got to have common interests. First of all, doing all these tours... The, the first thing is to obviously play live and to support the album um, and going to all these countries. Do you think that, or do you guys experience that, that doing these tours actually translate into album sales? And these album sales, do you think it's more digital sales or do you think it's more um, like hard copies? Um, it, things are definitely moving towards digital and I think it's more streaming. I mean, mm. you, you can tell, go on uh, YouTube or Spotify and you'll see what songs are getting the most spins and yes it does translate and it does sell more cds to be out on tour um there's no one thing anymore i don't think we're out here just to sell cds it's everything it's the bottom line of are we growing as a band are there more people coming to see us and i definitely think with every tour we do especially when we come overseas and, and play places like south africa for the first time it's just growing our band as a worldwide band and you can definitely see that through the the online activity and the digital and the streaming and even still CD sales. It's all about those Facebook likes. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> How do you guys think social media and the internet have changed the genre of metal? It's, it's changed a lot. It's a lot easier to find great bands. Even for myself, I always want to, I mean, I'm obviously a fan of black metal. It's, I pretty much collect black metal shirts and vinyl. What happened in the music industry is a lot of kids started believing, oh, my favorite bands don't make money off CD sales. And when a million to 10 million people think that and they don't buy a CD, that's why a band doesn't make money because no one's buying the yeah. CDs anymore. So it makes bands have to tour more. And when every band is on tour at the exact same time, it all kind of cannibalizes itself. So there's this weird circle that we're always trying to adjust to. But streaming stuff is fantastic. I think Spotify is amazing. I think they're adjusting, hopefully, the royalties. Paul knows that stuff best. Like, streaming will, like, be the thing that really saves the recording side of the industry because it's obviously not the best, but I read an interesting thing the other day where if you're just thinking about it in terms of CD sales, it's kind of backwards. It should be the bottom line. Are you, like, to get into the money side of things, it's – everything your merchandise your touring cd sales i mean it's not just about recording cds i think everyone needs to kind of like get off of that of that it's only about recording cds and if we can devalue the cd and sell 500,000 of them that that makes any real impact it's either people love your music and they're going to find it any way they want and they're going to come see you and buy your merch and support you or they're not and that's kind of the thing there's no it's not like a black and white issue anymore of like it's about CD sales and it's about this. It's it's different things because some bands don't sell that many records and then they draw, you know, they sell out every show they do around the world. So it's not really, uh, I guess that's it's so different. It's always changing. I mean, your videos are amazing. So I think a lot of your success, do you guys think that people get that theatrical thing that they get online and all of a sudden they're like, wow, we have to go see this band live because they've got so many artistic 
um, like, do, do you guys feel the same about the video? I mean, you, you guys put a lot of focus into the videos. Was that like a main plan or it just happened like that? I, I hope so. Yeah, it, it's definitely not something that we always thought about. Yeah. I mean, I feel like our visuals isn't something we really nailed until In Waves. Yeah. In Waves is something where we really put a lot of time into. It was like a year and a half process of preparation and execution. So since then, I feel like we've had the training to be able to really execute it. And it's always growing. We're always changing up and trying to think of new ideas and ways to be different. Like Paula was mentioning, you can't just think of it in this way. We think of that with everything, just to stick to the same format of releasing a record, touring for a year and a half on it, releasing a record, touring a year and a half for it. We're trying to think of different things for every method of being a band. Guys, thank you so much for your time and enjoy your stay in Africa. Ramfest! On signo la fur, a dos like a show. Thanks, guys. A dos like a show. A dos like a show. Yula fur, a dos like a show.